Tom, you just heard uh, Brent talk about ascendancy creating some of these tensions. And certainly anyone who's looked in the past couple of weeks at the brand spanking new census data might conclude, look, um, if you want a functioning housing market, no matter where you are, you're going to need Latino buyers who can buy. If you want to get a Social Security check in 2030, you're going to need Latino workers who earn. If you want a functioning country in 2040 and beyond, um, you can't do it without the people represented by the people in this room. So maybe this is just a moment in time, this backlash, this pushback, um, the uh, legal machinations that uh, you described the struggle against. Time is going to take care of some of this. No? There's no question that we're in a transition period. Um, this is another of a series of historical demographic transitions that this country has faced. Um, we faced them successfully in the past and will face this one successfully. The question is how difficult that transition period is and what damage is left once we get through it. There are folks who in this transition period would like to saddle us with changes in our basic principles, would like to change how we view who is a citizen, would like to change um, how we view who has a right to political participation. Those would be damaging and long-term harms that would be dealt in a transition period that we will get through. So you are right, but we still have a responsibility, particularly in the Latino community, in coalition with the other communities, as, as was mentioned, but to ensure that this transition period does not leave the nation permanently damaged and does not occur with so much vitriol and intergroup conflict uh, as to undermine the serious foundations of this nation. If you go back, uh, maybe start the clock running in the mid-60s with the Hart Seller Act, there's been periodic mumblings about changing the rules of the game, revisiting how and under what circumstances people become citizens of the United States. But has the ante been upped in a way that is even surprising to you on this panel? When people no longer complain about the 14th Amendment as some abstract proposition, but actually start to lay the groundwork for debating a repeal. Brent? Absolutely. It's, and it's, it's frightening, and it's, um, it, you know, it's amazing to me how you could go back and try to address something that's tied up to the very beginnings of the Civil Rights Movement. The 14th Amendment, for God's sakes, was put in place to stop, in essence, southern states from discriminating against African Americans and denying citizenship to, the, to African Americans um, right, out of, right out of the period of slavery in this country. And I would have thought that that's something that we would um, not go back and try to revisit because I think every American can understand how awful that period was. But here we are talking about the possibility of repealing the 14th Amendment and, in essence, creating two, two types of Americans, one without rights that would be hereditary. From generation to generation, potentially people could be in an undocumented status. Um, probably the workers of this nation would end up being without citizenship, and those that benefit from their labor would have it. And I think that is just awful, um, and I certainly hope that um, the vast majority of Americans um, pull back from such a, a nasty approach. I, I think that there's even some uh, folks in the Republican Party which have signaled they're opposed to this, but I'm surprised at how many haven't uh, signaled their opposition, and I'm, I, I think that uh, we've got to push back hard on this because that really is, I mean, I think, uh, Ray, you even said one time that the goal sometimes of this immigration discussion may not be just controlling immigration, but maybe trying to put one community under the thumb of, of uh, the majority population so we can exploit them and benefit from their work, but then deny them rights. And I think if, that, if this 14th Amendment uh, stuff keeps getting pushed, that's a clear sign that that's what they're trying to do. It's not about immigration anymore. It's about trying to create a, a hardworking community that you exploit and hold, hold uh, as like an indentured servant. So it's, it's very troubling, and I'm certainly hoping that we can reject that, because I think one thing about this country, we believe in hard work, and we believe that people who do work hard should be given the full rights of American citizenship. So, Maria, what's, what's all this about, well, making the previously unthinkable suddenly thinkable? 
Well, What's I think, going on? Personally, I think it's, in one sense, I think it's political expediency. But to build a little bit about what Brent was saying is to create a permanent underclass of stateless, nationless individuals is against our national security interest, period. All we have to look at is actually look at history and what happened in Germany when they tried to do the exact same thing with the Turks. When they brought in Turk, Turkish labor and they were supposed to send the Turks back, didn't happen. And so the kids all of a sudden were growing up without being able to identify themselves either as German or as Turkish, living in Germany, until re most recently until they were 18 years old. That created anger. About two years ago, in France, if you remember, in Paris all of a sudden was inundated and circled by riots, by a lot of unhappy young people who are Islam, who are Muslim, um, that couldn't declare their citizenship for, French, for France. And Paris burned. This is only two years ago. So when people start talking seriously about taking and repealing the 14th Amendment of citizenship, it's not just one, that we're going against what we believe as our fundamental identity as Americans. Because Americans, we are immigrants, fundamentally. That's who our identity is. But secondly, we're striking at the very heart of our national security. Because we're trying to basically tell people that they are not American when they feel it. And where else are they going to go? So when, we start, when folks start talking about repealing the 14th Amendment, this is serious. 